Third is one heart. The stubs are due back by 7th of December and the drawing will be on the 10th of December. We will notify the winners by phone on that day. So please include your phone number on your stubs. Also, we'll be having our biannual flea market on the 7th of October and the 8th. That's going to be on Saturday and Sunday at 9 a.m. to 2 p.m. downstairs. We are partnering with the Lackawanna Historical Society, so they have donated a lot of cool items. And we have new stuff out as well, and we have reorganized uh, the market a bit too. Lastly, we want to encourage all members to attend our October meeting on the 19th of October. We will have a guest speaker who will be announced shortly. It is also our annual election of officers, and we like as many of the membership to vote as possible. Uh, we will be sending out an electronic ballot by email at the first of the month. The meeting will also be our annual smorgasbord with food provided by members. We encourage you to bring your own ethnic dishes to celebrate the region's heritage. Now I want to introduce Mr. Charles Compass, pronounced like a compass. Sounds like Charlie it. has been a member of our society since the very beginning. In fact, he is member number 57. He also has chronicled many stories from our region, including tonight's presentation, The Electric Trolley in the Abington. So please welcome Charlie Compass. Thank you. You're welcome. <laughs> Well, hello everybody. I'm Charlie Compass, as he said. Um, I'm not a real loud-voiced person, so if you can't hear me, just raise your arm and I will try and speak up more. I guess I'm sort of filled in because they didn't have a regular scheduled program for tonight and then uh, Dale volunteered me, but uh, <laughs> I don't mind. I, I enjoyed this topic and um, I enjoy genealogy. You might say, what does trolleys have to do with genealogy, you know? Uh, Anyhow, the way I look at it, uh, I do genealogy and I do all the things on the charts, all the names, everything, but I like to know behind the names, behind what's on the chart, and uh, how did people live? What did they do? You know, how did they get around? Uh, where did they buy things? So uh, I always look more than just names on the chart and genealogy. So. Um, what happened in 2011, Clark Summit had a centennial, their 100th year, and I was involved with that history committee. And all year we did history this, history that. And I put together uh, a couple history programs. I did one on, the, I also collect postcards. We did one on the downtown of Clark Summit, how it was, how it is now. And I did this one because the trolley went right through Clark Summit and was a big part of building its population up. So. So I got involved into studying the Northern Electric, which is the name of the trolley. So a um, couple quick questions. Everybody know what a trolley is? Anybody doesn't? Okay. Anybody know what a city car versus an interurban trolley is? Nobody knows? Well, there are different kind of trolleys, actually. Uh, there's one that pretty much runs in the city. That'd be, uh, like you saw, the old trolleys of Scranton. If you, if you saw pictures of them, they're a smaller thing, they're more utilitarian inside, sometimes they used to have wooden bench seats and uh, just to get you from here to there. And they built up a big system. They actually, when they got started after 1886, they went as far as Duryea, where they connected with the Wilkes-Barre system, and they went as far as Forest City. That was a big, they actually went into three counties, the Scranton Transit System. But they did not go into North Scranton. They went down uh, North Main Avenue and they just went past the square. You know where Providence Square is? Yes. So uh, the reason why is that square, the road going up it was a private road. It belonged to a trolley. It belonged to a turnpike system. Maybe you heard of turnpikes before we had our city's roads we have. Now we had turnpikes that would charge you as you went along. And they started with the drinker one that came down to uh, Providence. And then from Providence up through the notch into Chinchilla, there was another turnpike system. 
and its last name was the Northern Trolley. And from there, there was another trolley system, went, turnpike system went from there up through Clark Summit and down to Factoryville, called the Factoryville and Abington Turnpike. And then there's a hook off called the Providence and Great Bend Turnpike, which hooked off, went up into uh, Clark's Green, Waverly, and on. So that was what owned that road in North Scranton. And as you know, the trolley started in Scranton in 1886, and they did not go into North Scranton, as I said. So some entrepreneurs said, well, let's build a trolley into the Abington. So they bought up all the property coming down to uh, Chinchilla, but they couldn't get from Chil Chinchilla into the road with Providence because that was that private turnpike company. And they tried to negotiate and negotiate. They finally had to buy that turnpike company, get the right of way to go from Chinchilla down to Providence Square. Now to get from Providence Square into downtown Scranton, they had to negotiate with the city of Scranton to get rights to go over the Scranton trackage. So uh, there's a whole big to-do about that, I won't go into it, but eventually they linked the system, went from downtown Scranton up through Clark Summit all the way to Montrose when it was eventually done. Okay. And I have a little handout if anybody wants to look at one uh, saying the different stages of the trolley and the different fares, how much it costs to go from point to point because they would go by zones. If you went to Chinchilla, you didn't pay as much as if you went to Montrose, for example. And uh, the time they, they built them in. So, these are here for anybody who wishes to look, look at one. And we'll get started. Okay. This trolley system had many, many names because if you look at your sheet, they kept expanding. And every time they wanted to expand, they needed more money. So they would sell stock, make a new company name, and that's how they went to the next thing, like from Dalton to Factorville, they needed more money, so they gave themselves a new name. When I go up to Nicholson, they sold more bonds, gave themselves another corporate name. So there's at least five or six corporate names associated with this company, but it's always called the Northern Electric, its initial name. Okay. So the trolley started in January 1, July 1, 1907. How did they get around in Clark Summit, Waverly, whatever, before the trolley came? What do you think? Lots, lots, of, um, lots of wagons. Before the trolley came, uh, there was a lot of farming in the Abingtons, and there's probably still a lot of it. And the big markets were in Lackawanna Valley, Scranton, that had a big population, you know, Dunmore, whatever. But they really had trouble getting their produce down to Scranton because it's a whole day wagon trip. And the railroad went up to Clark Summit, but they only cared mostly about coal. They didn't care about moving people or moving less than carload stuff like produce and milk and stuff. So that's another reason they built this system was to bring those products down to the valley. And how did the people lake their homes, you think, in the Abingtons before the trolley came? Kerosene. Kerosene, that's all they had, maybe candles. There was no electricity in the Abingtons before the trolley company came. When the trolley company came, they had to build a power plant, and from the power plant they started generating AC and DC, which would be used for the lights of houses. So before the trolley, there was no electricity in the Abingtons. <laughs> And this is the powerhouse they built. It's in outside Dalton. It's called Brookside. And its building is still there. It's called the Dalton Do It Center. You ever drive by it yeah. on 611? Yeah. That's the original powerhouse of the Northern Electric Trolley. Same yeah. building? They built it new, yeah. And the track you can see in front of you is the DLNW track. That's the one they eventually moved in up to the top of the mountain and went up to Nicholson. That's what, six now? That's Route 6 and 11 car route, but that was the way it originally was. And this is what the cars looked like. You know, we said the city cars are small little things, hard, but look at this one. Yeah. Big windows, Nile green, gold stripes, <laughs> upholstered, cherry stained, smoking compartment in the back, 
didn't bother the ladies and leather cover seats. And as they kept going further and further, the new, the first trolley, they had no toilet facility, but as they started going further, like the Montrose, they got cars with toilet facilities. Yeah. And I always love postcards and images just to see what's in them. Uh, lots of stuff here. This is the end of the line for the trolley where they had to stop in the city of Scranton and get their people. Their um, ticket place was over here. That's St. Luke's Church. This is all a parking lot now. All parking lot. There's the um, cathedral. And there's a city car. You see how small it is compared to these interurban cars. You can really see the difference. Okay. And I say this is about the 1920s because the cars are starting to come out. But there still is a wagon there, you know? <laughs> so it's in transition here. And uh, look at the fashions. Look at the fashions. That says Northern Park Clark Summit. That Northern Park is a place they built for amusements. We'll talk about it later. But in those days, you dress to the nines, no matter where you're going. And uh, you always want to look your best. And there's the Cathedral Church again. OK. What year is this picture? Well, I'm thinking they started in 1907. And this is like about 1912 or so. Because when they first uh, came into the city, the Mulberry Street Bridge wasn't there. So they had to come in a different way, down Olive Street, come across the Penn Avenue. They turn and they come up Linden Street. So this is Linden Street. That's how they ended up here for the first couple of years. And then later they're on the other road, uh, Wyoming Avenue, as the other pictures showed. But anyhow, I, I, I love looking at these old pictures. And this is the track. This is Scranton track in North Scranton. You can see it goes down the middle of the track, and there's a Scranton car. And now this is what the Northern Electric looked like. This is going up West Market Street. Sternness is over here about, yeah. And everything has changed into it. Down here now is that big um, concrete area. They put the Christmas trees and things. But that's how it was. Wooden or cobblestone and usually tracks up the middle. And then when they got up to the top of West Market Street, this is the only level block in West Market Street, but they were down the middle of the street. Can you see? Yeah. I'm okay, thanks. Yeah. So that's how they did in those days. They, uh, they owned the road, they bought it from the turnpike company, and they put their track right down the middle, which most trolleys did then because traffic would be on either side of the uh, trolley trackage. Now they're coming up West Market Street. Now they're starting to go into the notch to go towards the uh, Abingtons. And if you ever come down the road from Clark Summit, you always see Legacy Creek on your right. Well, the creek never moves, but uh, the creek is down there. But the trolley had to get over it, so they built the bridge. And this is, uh, shows up later when they are fighting with the city of Scranton, this particular bridge. But then they just go up. Do hmm? you know that creek is called? Leggett's. Yeah, it goes right down behind. Yeah, the one that's next to the. That's the one they're building new bridge over on uh, Rockwell Avenue. Yeah. That's Legacy Creek. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And then goes into the Lackawanna River. Park by the school. The, Which is? The Legacy Creek. Is that the creek that runs by the school? Well, it starts up in Clark's Green, comes all the way down to Clark Summit, down, and goes under the road. Every time you're coming up and down, from Clark Summit, you're still going over the road. You can actually see a bridge there. The one that goes to the park, or the, next to the elementary school? Mm -hmm. Yeah, this is Legacy Leg Leg Creek too, okay. behind that Clark Abington mm -hmm. School. That's the same one. And when they first bought the uh, right away off the uh, Turnpike Company, this is what they And this is their track. You could see their trolley poles of the trolley company, see? And there's Legacy Creek. That never moves. <laughs> and here's another picture postcard I have. This, for, this actually shows the trolley coming down the way. And two wagons on the turnpike. Is, is all of the notch uh, natural formation? Or it is. Dug out? No, it's natural. 
If you ever read the old books, it's always almost like an Indian path when they first started it. And then the settlers came in, they kept widening it and widening it. And some of it, uh, in lieu of paying taxes, you would work on a road for uh, a week or something. Mm -hmm. And they would have people do things like that. Is That's how you paid your taxes in the old days, was work on roads. <laughs> yeah. So it was, it was widened then? Well, we see the next picture. All right, here's another picture looking the other way. There's the trolley going down. There's Legas Creek. Here's the turnpike. And you know now, if you go up to Clark Summit, that's a four-lane highway. Yeah. Look how much they dug away. Okay. Look how much they dug away. Wow. Four-lane highway plus the divider in the middle, okay. plus the creek is still there. <laughs> but that's how it was. And this was just a rock, a rock crusher they had along the right away. This is a substation. Remember we looked at the building that was up in uh, Brookside near Dalton where they generate their power? Well, they had a couple of these buildings along their way that would boost power in their track. So it's, they send AC down to this building and inside you'll see as a converter changing from AC to DC and they put that out in the track for the trolleys to work. How many volts? Six. Which one, AC or DC? Yeah, DC. 650. 650. 650. And uh, there's that building again. You can see the track and the power poles. That building is still there. Anybody want to take a guess what it is? The water company up there? No. That building is still there. Not the plumbing up there, is it? That plumbing? You're getting close. So <laughs> where <laughs> That's the Jane's uh, installation oh, building. Oh, okay. oh. That building is that. Their insulation building is part of that. Where'd they get their power from? Overhead? The trolley did, yeah. I, I don't see no... Here's why you're right there. I had to get there. <laughs> yeah. See, that would supply the power from this point pretty much down to um, Providence Square. Because once they got onto the city track, then they're getting Scranton power. And they needed power from here to go up to Dalton. You know, so they needed power in their system, otherwise. It was just one line overhead, right? That was the hot and they used the tracks as the ground? That was a good point because they only had a one track system. The Northern Electric is only one track. Yeah. Both ways on one track. We'll talk, we'll talk about that. Here they are going through Ch Chinchilla. There's a place to catch the trolley. There it is. Page Here's the trolley, mm -hmm. tracks. And this is where, like the Snoke was, when you come to Clark Summit, where the Snoke is, and you turn up to go yeah. to Clark Screen. By Grove Street there? Yeah. This is famous because three turnpikes met at this one church. Wow. You know, you come up on the northern turnpike, yeah. and the factory old and Abington turnpike was coming down, and then you hook up on the Philadelphia and Great Bend turnpike to Clark Screen. Yeah. Was it was all at this church that those three turnpikes met. <laughs> was there a park on the other side of the street from that, the church? I don't think so. No. It's more than South Okay, friend, here is your track. <laughs> 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 See, when I gave this to other people, they were more interested in the track, so <laughs> you're, you're going to get there. We're going to the other one that's those that stayed in Grove Street. We'll get there. <laughs> Back. Going up the track. Okay, got another one. <laughs> That's just why you know, you said three Trump pikes met, and I was wondering where you said one was Philadelphia. Uh, well, that's down in Chinchilla, where it's split. It's split. The one that you just, the slide you were just on, mm -hmm. over the three Trump pikes. Philadelphia and Great Bend. Philadelphia and Great Bend. Great Bend. That was the oldest one. That became, that was the old drinker turnpike. Have you ever heard of that one? Okay. Then the factory old Nabington. And then the Northern, the Northern Boulevard Company. Now, when the Northern Electric built their track, they only built a one-track system. But yet, they had people going both ways all the time. And they were very much into uh, commuters, into Scranton. So they had a system that was very, very timed. And what they did is that uh, they worked off the schedule. And the, the more important trackage was going into Scranton because they wanted to get the commuters there in the morning. 
So the right of way was always going west or south or whatever. And, uh, but they had tra peop trolleys that wanted to come north. So what they did is they had trackage set up that these were flexible switches. When it came down, this one would always go straight. It, they would just sit that way. And he would always have the right of way. Now a trolley coming up would always have the, the trackage turned to go in here. Yeah. It's called flexible uh, switch. So the one coming up would always pull in here and wait for this guy to go down. Then he'd come out and do his route. And, and that's the how it was on the system. We're looking towards Scranton right now? Mm-hmm. From uh, Scranton up to uh, Dalton, they also had signals. They had the Union Switch Company signals, so it was very well regulated. Without software, too. Without software. <laughs> There's another well, sign. There's a there, there switchman there constantly? No, this is all automatic. <laughs> this is, they had to be on time. No, there ever, never any head-on crashes in this system. No. And this, there's another one looking this way. See, you can see this one's coming this way. He's going to go right in. He's not going straight. See? I assume that they would have most of them all go into Scranton in the morning and then out at the... Yeah, the ones going to Scranton want to get the commuters there in the morning. So they would always shoot down and the guys coming up would always wait for them to go by. Go to Scranton. Mm -hmm. What do you think we are? Uh, the Ramada. Yeah, close, close. <laughs> well, as you see, there's the notch that you came through. Which way are we facing? Are we we're south? facing towards the notch, and Scranton's oh, that way. Because the track is always on this side of the road. The bike bridge will be going over the top of that? Somewhere. It will be now, yeah. It would be right around there. Okay, where we are is just almost where the new shopping center is now. It's collect some of it. If anybody knows the area, this is Lansdowne. The, the, park, the houses? Mm -hmm. Okay. And over here, they're going to build a shopping center. And this is another look at it this way, a little bit later. More houses now, and there's actually a, a place for people to be picked up. And then we're going up Clark Summits Hill. And then they had to dig all this out to make the shopping center. What's <laughs> it? <laughs> we are at the top of the hill. Top of the hill, and uh, there's a park there. That's the park I meant, yeah. Yeah. Trolley companies in the old days, um, to get track people on their cars, especially on weekends when people weren't commuting to work, they would build parks. And they'd try to get people to go on their trolleys, pay the fare, and go to the parks. So this one, these parks that they built, at least this company, was free admission. You just had to just pay to get in pay your trolley ride to get up there and then pay to do what you wanted to do inside. What type of park? Can you use park or just like a... This one's a 12 acre mm. park. <laughs> right, here's where we, the trolley is sitting. So you'd come in, you'd come in that ticket and they had a big dance hall. If you look, I read the old papers and I have advertisements of dances being held. And then they had a, the big thing then was a, a roller coaster wasn't as much high as it was collect some of the hills. It, you'd get in and you, you'd dip. You know, they used the, the dips of the, the hills for your trolley um, roller coaster ride. And they had a merry-go-round and stands. And they had a lot of picnicking, as you could see. And uh, I think game's a chance. So, uh, read the collect some of the papers. Groups would have day trips there. Churches would have day trips there. Uh, churches in Clark, Scranton would come up for day trips to these parks. So that's what you did for amusement in those days. You know, you uh, you went outside, you did things dressed in your very best. And where, where, where exactly is that in? You, you know, they're coming up the hill from Clark Summit, up into Clark Summit. Mm -hmm. Stop the hill. There's the Citizens Bank. Yeah. The Citizens Bank is over here. Grove Street, right the there. Citizens Bank is there. And there's the eyeglass place there now, and the gas station over there. Mm -hmm. I'd love to get a metal detector in there, but... <laughs> yeah, well, there's a lot of houses there now. That would be the, the corner where um, 
insurance company. There's a bunch pizza, of pizza, uh, restaurant. Uh, yeah, that's across the street. Colorado's. Yeah. All kinds of business. Yeah, Colorado's across the other, the fourth corner. Yeah. So which corner? Co Colorado's and the gas station are across the street. So which the bank is that on is where the bank is or the other side? The fourth one. What? <laughs> the last corner where the hot, that eyeglass place is. Okay, that little shopping center is there. No. It's at top of the hill. Top of the hill. Yeah. You go up top of the hill. Well, I mean, you start going there's an eyeglass place there now. Yeah. Well, there's an eyeglass place. Yeah. Yeah. So as time went on, they made it nicer and nicer. Different views of it. There's the big dance floor. Wow. That was a nice one, I'm sure. <coughs> and there's a couple of things I found in newspapers mm -hmm. of the time. Watch your step, come and dance. <laughs> you know what years that existed? Okay, well the park closed in 24, it burned mm -hmm. by fire. And it started in 1908, so that's the frame. I love these things. <laughs> Everybody should have a hat like that. Is <laughs> Luna uh, Park around that area yeah. also? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Alright, so this is State Street and that's the Grove Street and you can see that's the way to go to Lake Winola and that actually says the Hillside Home, which is the Clark Summit Hospital. Yeah. Uh -huh. And another picture of it. Another picture of it I had. You have to tie it down. These are all postcards I have of it. How would you like to drive that? I would. Oh, yeah. I would. A big walkway up to the dancing. Oh, wow, has it changed? <laughs> okay. So from that point now, we're going down into Clark Summit. And they are on this side of the road, going down the grade. There's a better one going down the grade. And there's a trolley in there somewhere. I can't. See. But um, after the trolley came, the areas start to build up. and. This is looking west. This is look, looking up towards Clark's Green. You see it's starting to fill in. This is looking the other way towards the Morgan Highway side, starting to fill in. And coming to downtown Clark Summit. Looks how it was. We know this business started in 1911. And we know this track went in 1907. So that's maybe like 1912 or 13, that picture. Dirt roads. And this is where the Our Lady of Snows Church is now. That's, that used to be the Nichols Barn. They bought it. Mm -hmm. Anybody know where the post office is in Clark Summit now? Yeah. That's where it is, right there. <coughs> yeah. In that spot there, Clark Summit built its station for the Northern Electric. And this is where the bank would be now. But uh, you can see, it was just waiting to be built up. There was no population to speak of at the time. Okay, there's our trolley track again. Bundles will be on the left side there. Bundles are right about here. And that's the old fire hall. Okay, that's Depot Street because in 19, when the railroad was built, the depot for the railroad is down the end of that street. So the main thoroughfare was this one to go down to the railroad depot. And that burned 1903 and that moved up to here where it is now near Bedford Apartments. And this started to get more and more developed because the trolley went out that way and businesses started going out that way. But it evolved. And this building, you'll see in another picture, gets moved. Gets moved to there. Hmm. That's the tenant building, it's not the tenant hotel. There's the, a whole story about that one, but uh, he built it, uh, anyhow, he built it. There's that building we're just looking at, it's right there. Mm -hmm. When they started building the uh, railroad uh, update to uh, the DLNW, we're dropping the track and building Nicholson Bridge and things, a lot of workers were in town. And the man who had, Mr. Frank Tennant, had built a hotel down here and he sold it and he moved it up here to that. 
he said, I would not build another hotel. But when all those people started coming to town, they're looking for places to stay when they're building the hotel, building the railroad, he built the hotel. And this guy took him to court, but it never resolved. But that's the Tenant Hotel, which is still there, minus these porches. If you ever go into downtown, you'll see that building is still there. That's the tenant building. What? Tenant. Tenant. T N N A N T. Mm -hmm. And this is that track we saw earlier going down to the Clark Hall. And right next to the uh, depot, they built the bank. And here's the track. And that bank expanded in 1926, and the track is still there. And after the track was pulled out, that area stayed like it is now. It's just a parking area. But uh, this hotel's still there. There's the Clark Steel, Clark Summit Fire Hall. And there's the building I'm interested in, the Clark Summit Northern Electric Station. Over there is Jennings Calvi Funeral Home. Anybody knows that? Fashions again, huh? This must have been when it was first built because look how nice and new it looks. So passengers were over here and the freight was over here. And I guess people would go into the freight station and buy park building lots. They must have had a place there, a table set up. But they're always pushing selling land after the electric, no, electric went through. All right, there's the station again. And here's the train coming down. These people are waiting. That was at the end of Depot Street. Hit, no? no, that's on the other side of this building. It's over here, Depot Street. That's the building that moved. They, they moved. Anybody go to State Street Grill? It's right there. Yeah. You still walk up the steps to get to State Street Grill. It's, it, it's not level. <laughs> and this I love. This guy was running for Clark Summit Council. And look what he said he did. He had toilets installed in the North Electric Station. <laughs> and this is 1919. So they built the thing in 1907. From 1907 to 1918 or 17 before they had no toilets in that station. <laughs> and he was very proud of it. <laughs> and he fought increase in fares, and he fought to get more cars in the winter. Well, I guess he won again. <laughs> and this is coming out of Clark Summit, going down towards the far side of town. Okay. These two slides show you a little bit of the growth that happened since the trolley came. This one we saw. And there's that same area up here. Hmm. In what? Uh, 17 years. Yeah, well. 1903 to 1920. So World War I parade. That's what you call a busy photo. I, I love busy pictures. Still have a wagon showing up. <laughs> the old car. <coughs> Anybody know when the Model T came out? And before he built his Model T? Not sure. Oh, seven or eight around there. 1908. So right after the, uh, this is far side of town. This now is now the conservation conservancy walking trail. If you go out to it, on the other side of Clark Summit, there's a walking trail and this is what it's replacing, this trackage. And if you go out to uh, Ackerley Fairgrounds, it, to get over Ackerley Fairgrounds, the Northern Electric had to build a bridge, which is gone, but one of the uh, abutments is still there. And then from Clark Summit, they're going up the line. And this is Dalton. This building is still there in Dalton. It's now a, uh, a pet uh, yeah. 
Romer, you're up. I take my dog there. <laughs> well, you're in a Northern Electric building. <laughs> <laughs> and the track ran right alongside, and that's where the station was. And then past that building, down the uh, Factoryville Creek, the trolley went down to uh, what we call Brookside, that first power station slide. That's where it's going. Now, that trolley would come in behind here. The track was behind here. And that track there, and it had little tracks here for yard, and this is their maintenance building, which is all gone now. But that's a trolley maintenance building, and uh, the DLL, the L and W track, as I mentioned. And behind here, they still had to go further, the Factorville, Hop Bottom, whatever, like an old, there was a big looping bridge all the way around the back that went here. The track was gone, but the roadbed was there. Went over the road, and you can still see a, uh, a rock wall of where the other side of that bridge was. We'll see it. Does that building still exist? No. Hmm? Does that building still exist? This one? Yeah. Yeah, that's the Dalton Do It Center. Yeah. Oh. That's still there. <laughs> yeah. But those are gone. They burned. But it's the same building or they tear it down this build. No, it's the same building. Yes. Yeah. 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 Called repurposing, I guess. <laughs> and if it came around on the, the track, this is what you'd see on the other side. They're maintenance buildings. And then right past that they went over the roadbed, first the track and then the road when it was track replace, road replaced the track and went a little bit further to what they call Factoryville Junction. And at Factoryville Junction they made a left turn and went down to Lake Winola where they had another park. So to get people, they had two parks this system. They had one Lake Winola which also had a merry-go-round and the Northern Electric owned Lake Winola at one time. They owned the lake. Wow. And they had boats, they had uh, you know, boat trips and uh, they had rides. So uh, they tried to get people to come to their parks on the, uh, especially on weekends. And this one was going to Lake Winola. You think they're dressed for a picnic? <laughs> <laughs> you think? <laughs> okay. So behind that area I told you, the, where the uh, maintenance was, this big looping bridge went over the railroad tracks, and now it's Route 6 and 11. And that thing is still there. If you look, you can see the abutment where the bridge landed on, on that side of the road. You can actually go up and touch it if you want. <laughs> yeah. And then once it got the other side, it was level, and then it went down towards Factoryville. What would that be in year? What would that be in year? The year? Thing? No, yeah. near. What's it? Yeah, what's, what's near it? Or where is that location? The landmark? Anything particular? You have to look for it because if you're coming towards Clark Summit, you don't see it because of the vegetation. It's better to see it going this way and you see the actual stonework. Is it after the Do It Center? Or? Yeah, after the Do It Center. Okay. Right after the Do It Center, it had this big looping track to get over okay. on the other side of the roadbed. So you can see it. Yeah. So, what do you think? <laughs> Interesting, thank you. No, uh, the trolley started having financial problems in 1929. And you know when the Great Depression started? Crash, yeah. mm -hmm. And the DL&W sold their trackage going up the uh, 6 and 11 now for $1 to the state. And the state had to build a public road according to the franchise of the DLNW giving them that land. Yeah. So when they gave them that land, people started riding on cars. Yeah. So that hurt the passenger traffic. And trucks started to go up and down that track. So the trolley started used to bring, used to bring milk down to the different uh, milk places in Scranton, you know, like Woodlawn and uh, Herschel's. So I lost that truck trade. Trucks then went to the farms and brought the milk down. It lost all its freight business. 
and lost a lot of passenger business. So uh, it started going into financial problems. So in 1929, it went to file for bankruptcy and then the receiver was put on the line and they ran it for two more years to 1931 when the court said you had to cease and stop. So uh, 1931, late summer, the uh, employees of the company said, oh, we can run it. So they started to uh, bond together like a co-op and they ran it then from then until it went out of business in September 21, 1932. What happened between that point and uh, them taking it over is that uh, over time, the trolley company get money would sell part of its roadbed. You know, it kept the trackage rights, but it would sell the road. So it sold like the area through the notch and upper north west Market Street to the state and parts below to the city. So around 1932, the state said, uh, we want to expand this road. We want to go through the notch better. You're going to have to move. Remember that bridge we saw? Mm -hmm. They said, well, you have to move the bridge. Mm -hmm. You have to move your track. Mm -hmm. And these people had no money because they were just a co-op of the uh, employees. He said, well, we can't afford this. <laughs> so uh, the city said, OK, we're going to block the track. And on that date, September 21, 1932, they kept the cars from going any further than here. Where is this location right there? This is that city line, you know, where Chinchilla and Clark Summit meet? Yeah. Uh, Chinchilla and Scranton meet? Mm -hmm. If you're coming up, right before that Chapman Supply, you see a sign, Welcome to yeah. South Abington? Yeah. Well, that's the city right. line. So around that point, they stopped it. So for a couple of days, the employees would take the people down to here, put them in their cars and drive them to work, and then drive them back, put them on the trolley and take them back to their homes. But that didn't last too long. And uh, so the line closed and the company then sued the city and stayed for stopping them. And they went to court for about five, seven years and they won in court, but they're out of business. <laughs> so uh, that's the end of the line. Put everything in storage up. These are the maintenance buildings. And in about 1934, they burned all the cars. There's no left at all? Really? They burned all the cars. So. Where about did they burn them? Probably on site. Right there. Oh, wow. They usually do that, burn them on site, and they just take the metal, you know? So now you know what our ancestors drove and rode and enjoyed. Yeah. They had fun on these trolleys. Mm -hmm. Yes, sir? Uh, Charlie, what was the hour of operations from AM to PM? Oh, uh. Because of the commuters, they had a guy, they had a car parked in Scranton's, they had one of these cars parked in Scranton's uh, trolley spot right there in Providence. Mm -hmm. He'd go there at six in the morning, he'd start going north with a six o'clock run. And about that same time, six o'clock, they came south with the train. So they started from six o'clock to almost 12 midnight. They were, in, they were running there. So they were pretty punctual and uh, pretty consistent. How often, in an hour? Well, it took them a half hour to get to Alton. Well, it was just the one car. No, no. They would double in cars, according to... Uh, some trains actually had four attached. Like when they went to Lake Winola, mm -hmm. they would have sets of four. But the switches wouldn't hold four. I was going to say, when they pulled <laughs> off, is it big enough? <laughs> so they call that sawing. Uh, with the four would coming up and the one coming down, the one would come down and stop. And there's actually two in the line already. He go further, the first one come out. Oh, they never hit. Yeah. They, they didn't often have fours, but they did. That's what they did. They would saw it through a, a siding. And what year did that start? The trolley? Yeah. 1907, okay. July 1. Hmm. Did they have trolleys coming up the alley here? That was Scranton trolleys, city trolleys. But they come up here. They, did. they went all the way to the Fourth City yeah. at one time. Well, if you see um, on here, you, have, you pay different amounts going to different cities. Like if you want to go to Chinchilla, you'd pay a dime. If you want to go to Clock Summit to the park, you'd pay 15 cents. But uh, 
Scranton did the same thing too. If you want to get on in Scranton and paid your nickel fare, if you want to go to Forest City, you didn't go for a nickel. You know, they charge you by zones. Yeah. The same idea. I missed the beginning of your presentation. Yeah, Sorry, but how did that go into Scranton? Is that Probably. would have come like, you know, where Kaiser Avenue is now? How did it? Kaiser Avenue? Get, how did it get from Clark's on State Street into Scranton? What area? Would it have gone the area where? No, they would only go. The, they had to go where the track was, which is down through the Market notch Street, right? to uh, oh, Providence. Street. That's the only way they can go where the track was. <laughs> okay. Yes, sir. And went up uh, Drinker Street to street cars. With the Scranton cars, yeah, right. yeah. But they were they weren't as nice as these cars. <laughs> <laughs> Another interesting thing on the sheet. Uh, uh, for the heck of it, there's a site on the internet that uh, you could plug in an amount of money, like a nickel, and you could plug in the year, like 1907, and it tell you how much a nickel was worth then, mm -hmm. and their spending power. And uh, on the bottom there, a nickel, uh, the fare from Scranton to Clark Summit, which was 15 cents at the time, would be 3.47 in money now. So uh, a nickel then was probably at least a buck or something to ride the trolley. Mm -hmm. You know, it was. A nickel sounds like a little bit, but for them it was uh, enough. It was enough. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. Yes, sir. Um, were the tracks for these trolleys separate than the tracks for like freight trains and stuff? Mm -hmm. yeah. 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 Same gauge? Exact same gauge, standard gauge, but uh, the trains didn't have wire over the top. No, <laughs> So this is the coloration of what it, what uh, the car looked like. Uh, this actually says Northern Electric. I, I, I hate to pass it around and get it dropped, but uh, no. there it is. It's a custom paint job. Mm -hmm. Talk about the, the freight uh, being used to transport milk and such. Yes. What did the uh, freight cars look like? I've never seen a trolley freight car. They had special freight cars that were different than these. It kind of looked like that without the windows. No, almost like a box car that, uh, that ran with the wires on above it. They actually had, Northern Electric had, had uh, at least three spots along it where farmers would bring milk to these particular areas and they'd drive in and get the milk and do milk runs into Scranton. Yes? I just wanted to thank you for mentioning my town, Forest City. Yes. I'll tell you that if anybody would like to come up to our historical society. How long did the trolleys last up there? The, the, the That's what I was planning on asking you because you were saying <laughs> <laughs> They started retrenching early. They pulled them out of there after a while. I'd like some of you to come up and see what we have up there. And I have a 24 by 36 picture of the trolley. Uh -huh. And I have the message on the bottom, so people could read what it said. And it said it took two and a half hours to come from Scranton to Forest City. Would you know the fare? Not off okay. I'm just, just curious. Just curious. Yeah. On this particular uh, Northern Electric, no. there's a book put out in 1980, and there's a book put out in 1987. This one is still available for sale by the Cons Scranton uh, Countryside Conservancy, the one who's building the trail on the Northern Electric roadbed. Where's that at? That is at where would you buy that? I mean, where the oh, they're up in. Uh, their office is up in uh, a room on uh, Keystone College. But uh, they must, they're on the internet, Countryside Conservancy. And, uh, mm, mm. anybody who wants to, anybody who didn't get enough Clark Summit, uh, we had a book put out on our 75th anniversary and we're reprinting it all new, with adding the 30 years since this was done in 19... All those pictures are in there? Some of them. Some of them. But, I mean, we have a up upgraded uh, history of Clark Summit that I participated in, so uh, they're coming out for Christmas. And uh, anybody belongs to Lock on Historical, I wrote an article uh, last year on this trolley, only the part that dealt in Scranton, you know, with the routes they went and this, and that's belongs to Lock on Historical. They put this out last summer, but good reading because I wrote it. <laughs> if anybody wants to read it here, you're welcome to. And I had 
I actually have a ticket from the Norton Electric. Uh, look like this. This one I had. Uh, they had punched it. Fifteen cents. Hmm. City Line and Clark Summit. So fifteen cents. They went from downtown Scranton. We know where fifteen cents took you hmm. to Clark Summit, and that's what my ticket actually sell it says. So that little artifact I have. Not here though, but a copy of it. <laughs> How did that work? You jump on, you pay where you got off, or you pay, tell them where you want to go when you first get on? Since I wasn't there, I would assume <laughs> <laughs> that you tell them where you're going. At the beginning. Mm -hmm. Another interesting thing, since you seem to be a, a receptive audience, uh, the deal with Scranton Transit is that if you got on anywhere on the system before Providence Square, you know, you paid the money, and that was that. But then you can get on and off, on and off, wherever you want. But from that point on into Central City, you cannot get off that trolley. Mm. <laughs> they did not want the Northern Electric picking up and discharging partners, uh, passengers anywhere from Providence into Central City. So um, they didn't want any competition. That's how they did it. So when you got on in Central City, you had to stay on all the way to Providence Square before you can get off the trolley if you wherever you lived because of their trolley system right you could not get off on their uh, anywhere in their system <laughs> you could pull it they wouldn't stop <laughs> by the contract they couldn't let you off before Providence Square in Scranton yeah from the North Main Avenue down to Scranton that's Scranton's roadbed and the North Electric was just renting it. Another thing, when they made the agreement with Scranton, they had to pay the city a percentage of everybody who got on from 23 School, which is upper West Market Street, to uh, Providence Square and into Central City. They had to pay a percentage, so they lost more money there in that agreement. Yes? Where the uh, collection of your postcards came from? <laughs> Hither and yon. <laughs> <laughs> Not from the historical society? Or? Oh, you can go to antique dealers. Uh, people do sell them. But this is your collection? I've been doing it over 30 years, so... Uh, mm -hmm. been a while. Mm -hmm. Anybody see Jack Hiddleston's death? He was a person who wrote many... Postcard books, he and I were good friends, and we also used to do postcarding together. But um, that's how long I know I've been doing it. So, uh, I don't know how long I've been doing it with him. <laughs> uh, anything else of interest? I think uh, the park at Lake Winola closed. That closed, uh, it tells you right here when they shut the line down to Lake Winola. 1931, was it? 1931. And uh, after, after they shut it down, they sold that right away. They sold the lake to a lake uh, group for the water rights. And, and, and now it's all private. But uh, when they went bankrupt, they sold all that stuff. Do you know where the cave is up there at Lake Manola? Indian cave? No. I found an article 1892 in the paper where they discovered an Indian cave with writings on the side. It was by a hotel. It was a big hotel up there. Mm -hmm. I know wherever the hotel was, that's where the cave was. And they talked to the old timers back then. They said they don't remember ever hearing of that. But those writings on the ceiling by Indians. Was it in, was it in English? <laughs> I didn't know Indians wrote. <laughs> Pictures and stuff, you know, whatever. Pictographs, okay. Any questions on anything? Yes, ma'am. I just want to tell you, my father worked on the Northern Electric. Excellent. Which part? Got it, he knows. Mm. <laughs> he was like a maintenance man. Was he in the shops? I think he, I think he, 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 was, I think he might have been building the tracks or something. Huh? I still got his spikes and everything in his belt. Oh, he must have been working on the overhead to climb for the overhead. Right. Yeah. Well, I guess that's it. Yes, sir. It wasn't ours. 
don't know about the Scranton cars. <laughs> no, they had heat, of course. Yeah. 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 yeah I drive a, a, the Scranton trolley here for our, our museum, and we have heat. It's powered from the electrical line. Yeah, I also uh, volunteer trolley driver down at the Scranton Trolley Museum. <laughs> if you ever come, I might be the driver. <laughs> Thanks for the warning. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks for the warning. Where is it? Where is the Scranton Trolley? It shares the parking lot with Steamtown. Okay. Steamtown's on one side and the trolley... Is that the one that goes under the tunnel, goes up to uh, Montage? Yeah, that right, yeah. Anything else, anybody? Where they put that rail system for the freight in? They have another track over there. I think it was a double track. Which track are we talking about? A new one? No, years ago. They're still in operation now. It goes over the, over the what's it called, Nicholson Bridge. Oh, that's a that's the railroad railroad. Yeah. That's what yeah. I mean. When did that come, get in existence? That started in 1851. Oh. Not that track, but that line. Right. And then went up to Clark Summit and on the back way and right. over Tunnel Hill and down to Nicholson and then right. on the level. And then 1915, they raised it all. So it wasn't down in the valley anymore. It was up on the hills. Right. How does your trolley, your, your trolley now, how does it get power? Electrical power from... Overhead? Same way. DC? Always DC. Okay. How many volts? And I can 650. see this thing down at the stadium and stuff. Uh-huh. Hmm. It's all DC motors. It has to be DC power. <laughs> no, I, I, well, I remember they switched from trolleys to like a uh, car with rubber tires in Scranton. That's not a trolley. Well, they used to, they used to <laughs> that's a bus. That's a bus. <laughs> no, no, they got the power from overhead, and they drove around. Not with wheels. Yeah, rubber that's wheels. That's they do. Rubber tire with buses. They kept the car. <laughs> um, where did the line terminate in Scranton? Or did it connect with like the Laurel line or other other lines downtown? Where it terminated? Yeah. Was that at St. Luke's Church? But it was on Scranton track. Yeah. Did, did it connect from there with uh, with other lines like the Laurel line? No, the Laura line was down the hill and, and not by all by itself. Okay, so the Laura line is a line all by itself, a big loop. Nothing else was ever on it. So none of them, none of them, none of them connected. You would just have to take you to center seating if you only go south from there. You'd have to go on a different line. The Scranton line, yeah. To get on the Laura line, you had to walk down to the Laura line station. <laughs> northern electric Scranton line. It didn't connect to any lines further south or any other direction. It ended there on Wyoming Avenue. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Well, I'm glad it seemed to be an interesting topic. I, I was worried because of the genealogy part. But our ancestors did this. <laughs> That's why it's so easy to follow. When does your trolley run? Hmm? Yours today, like... Thursday, Friday, Saturday, Sunday. Until when? In November? Until the leaves stop falling, I guess. <laughs> Can I pick you up at school town and take you down the stage? The trolley museum near Steamtown, yes. Yeah. <laughs> Go to Steamtown, they won't put you on the trolley. You have to get on at the Steamtown Yeah. Yeah. Okay. How much is that? Big? Well, there you go. You're going to look at it. That was a, that's a, a copy out of a newspaper. That was a newspaper pay, picture. Okay. Well, thank you, everybody. <laughs> Uh, members, uh, audience members, uh, at this time I want to make a correction. I stated uh, 
we're having a, a flea market. It's going to be on the 7th and 8th, on a Friday and Saturday. And it's, uh, we're looking for some type of donations to get to the society. And actually, we don't accept any type of clothes. So we we'll look for some help on the outside. At this time, we want to uh, have our guest speaker pull the winning raffle ticket for tonight's drawing. Okay, does anybody want a ticket that hasn't bought one yet? <laughs> oh, that's a bright light. Probably knows that it makes me Look down down here. Da 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 da